Uh, I want to do this one really quickly. Jason in Tennessee, how are you? Yeah. Hey, Matt uh, and Dave. Uh, hey, Jason. Again. This is my second time to call. Yeah. Hey, um, sorry, Matt. By the way, last time I called, I didn't realize you were talking. It was the other host I thought was talking, so I did not mean to ignore you. But to get to my questions, um, do you mind if I tack on a couple of questions real quick to that conversation with the lady you had about the well, Garden of Eden and slavery real quick? I know that's kind of a change, yeah. but it'll be quick. No. I, 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 yes, I do mind. We're already over time. It says here you had a question about whether or not visibility is a requirement for a God to exist. Uh, and my answer is sure. no. And it has nothing to do with divine hiddenness because that's not about visibility. That's about detectability. Um, the air in front of me is generally not visible, but it is absolutely detectable. And as soon as it goes away, I can detect it. And, you know, the fact is what you need to have is a God that is detectable in some way. That's it. Right. So do you mind if I respond, please? Sure. Okay. So if we talk about detectability or the visibility of the God, there's a couple of things that we know in science, for example, that we would say we observe the effects of. And, and Christians would say, I observe the effects of prayer, right? But they, they can't demonstrate the visibility or the presence of God because God would be a sentient being with a, with a free will of his own. They're, they're not. to you is this. When somebody says they're observing the effects of prayer, that's what they believe is happening, but that's not what's happening. They'd have to demonstrate that they're observing the effects of prayer. Okay, so so let me ask you a question then, Matt. Follow up real yeah. quick, because I know you're familiar with Christian theology, okay? Some of it. This would tie into the discussion of slavery real quick. Is the topic of the immorality or what you would say is the immorality of slavery, is that a defeater for the existence of a Christian God? No. It just, it, so okay. first of all, when, when we say the existence of a Christian God, there's more than one Christian God. Can, can we at least understand that? Okay, that let's there talk are about King James Bible version. Well, so it doesn't matter which Bible version. There are different characters sure. to God depending on what you read and how you interpret it. I mean, is God jealous? Well, it literally says so, but that doesn't make sense. So maybe we're, we should be understanding that metaphorically instead of, you know, that God's actually jealous. So when you talk about the character of God, is God the sort? Is God cruel at all? Well, I would argue that the God of the Bible actively does many things that are cruel in the Bible. For example, even telling Abraham to kill Isaac was cruel to both Abraham and to Isaac. Doesn't matter how it turned out in the end, but it was cruel to both of them. Okay. What he did to Job's so me, family was cool. My question the, is, this, hey, though, I'm sorry. Well, Jason, uh, just to cut cut in there because we are out over time. But um, as Matt was saying, you a lot of Christians argue against the Old Testament God. They don't like to talk about the the angry Father, um, but they want to talk about nice Jesus. And like a lot of Christians, kind of present a picture. Oh, I that don't. There's two, I don't mind it. Two, two different gods there: the the God of the Old Testament, and the God of the New Testament, but. I think you're diverting a little bit. I want to go back to what you originally said you were calling in about with the detectability of God or the visibility of God. My point with that is, it's it's to, regardless of whether we can see the effects of God, if if there's a God out there who is watching this 2,000-year debate about his existence, and he wants there to be some kind of uh, answer about this, and he wants people to know him, if he wants people to really know him, if that's the idea behind all of this, that he wants fellowship with his creation, then why didn't he show up? Why didn't he just just fucking prove himself? He can do it, right? Why all this mystery and okay, invisibility great, great and all of this Dave. stuff? Well, give me a great answer. All right. Great question, Dave. Can I respond, please? Yes. I, yes. I know you're pressed for time. That's why I don't mean to be rude. No, no, no. no you're if fine. God were to calm down... I'm sorry, if God were to come down from heaven to earth, according to like what you say in Revelation with, with Christ, if God were to physically demonstrate himself, would that lead to the conclusion that everybody would choose to worship him? No. No. Because but he would at least, demand, at right? least he would prove that he exists. Now, if he proved that and he exists what? and he's the God of the Bible, I want nothing to do with him. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Exactly. But at least he would. Exactly. At least he so would. He, so, what's the point? 
Well, the point would be that if God already had an ordained plan of how he wanted to carry out salvation, and you're saying God needs to physically demonstrate or prove himself, you're saying you still would not follow that God, and that therefore the same result would still happen. You would still end up in the same place, according to Christian theology, correct? Jason, Jason, that that's not true for everybody. There are people so with open saying, hearts. You can, really, you no, can no, no. prove to me that there's a king, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to swear fealty to the king. I might, I might not. And 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 if God, but no, no, no. You, you say what's the point? Because Dave said if he's the actual God of the Bible, then he's not going to follow him. But that's the thing. If the God is a monster, nobody should be following or worshiping him. If the God is advocating for slavery and 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 war. And women don't matter as much as men, if at all. Uh, that's not a God that I would want to follow. But I would definitely want to know that he existed. So the point of showing that he existed is so that you can stop calling into atheist shows because atheists are now just flatly rejecting what we know to be true. And now all of a sudden this and show goes away and every reasonable excuse that people have for saying, ah, I just don't believe it, all of that goes away. Now the reprobate are truly reprobate. Then, the, then everybody can make up their mind based upon based upon evidence. People can make up their mind based upon what they know of this God. It's kind of like the last election. People You're can basically... look at Trump and go, people can look at Trump and go, he's a fucking monster, but I'm still going to vote for him. And that's yeah. the way they would do with God. And you're basically arguing at this point, why should God bother? He already knows who is and isn't going to believe him, and he's fine with it. Well, cool. Then he's a dick. Well, that's not, that's not necessarily what I'm saying. What I am saying is that you both have demonstrated or said before, and I don't mean to take it out of context, that you're you assuming would not no. follow this Christian God. We, I would not worship a God. I, wish it, I probably wouldn't worship any God. But if the God that if there's a God that exists and he shows himself to me and he and we're able to actually say, oh, OK, you are a God and you're a good God. All of a sudden that changes my mind, doesn't it? But clearly your God is fucking terrified of showing himself to me or anybody else in history. So according to the this is why I was tying into the slavery point, and I promise I'll be punctual and then I'll get off your space. I know you guys are busy. The question is really quick. When I've heard the conversations about slavery, and I know it usually goes south, the question is, what morality standard are you using if the Mine. Bible says that God is the standard? Mine. Okay. I don't if care if the Bible says I, I, I I've already standard. answered. I've already answered this question about 500,000 times. I'm using my standard, which is that it's based primarily on well-being. And what's, what's really a problem here, Jason, is that I bet you agree with me. I bet you agree that it is immoral to own people as property and beat them as long as they don't die within a couple of days. My response to that would be, would I say in current society that it would be abhorrent or vulgar to me or distasteful? I would absolutely agree. For me, well, that's, say, that's the slimiest way out because you've excluded the past. I'm, I'm saying fine. I'm saying I'm saying it was immoral in the past and in the present and in the future. And not just distasteful. But if God defines morality, if God defines morality in the Bible, he doesn't. He doesn't. Be a hypocrite as a Christian, not he doesn't. To define it. You have no evidence that there is a God. You don't know what God thinks about anything. All you know is what the Bible says, and you are willing to sacrifice your humanity on the altar of a book that you can't prove. <clears throat> hey, Jason, forget not, slavery a minute. Yeah. Do you believe? Yes, sir. Do you do you believe the story of Lot as as recorded in the Bible? I wouldn't know whether it's a parable or a true story, so I, I'm not sure. I, I can well, go the either way, but for your the, the point, writers of the the writer the writers of the New Testament called him righteous Lot, so they believed it, apparently. Okay. Um, and and if if that's true, let's assume that that really happened. Was it moral of Lot to offer his daughters to the men of Sodom? To do with as they pleased. Righteous lot. I know. I know. I'm trying to think of a good way to respond because I know that anyway. There's not there's one. There's not one. There's the not point. one. This is the embarrassing Jesus, thing. This is the reason why. One. This is why Dave and I gave this shit up, is, and is it's this, it's, this it's absolutely God, you know? it's absolutely embarrassing to watch decent people. Because I think you're probably one. Of, you're probably a wonderful person, Jason. 
but you are willing to tie yourself and in I knots. Too, you too, man. You are willing to tie well, yourself in knots and embarrass yourself publicly on, on on sacrificing your humanity and all sense of decency just so that you don't dare say maybe the Bible's not right about something. Jason, well, uh, what, a lot of times when people I, ask me... If I said that or believe that, it'd be hypocritical of me. Well, it is if you're going to maintain How could I be a professing Christian... Sorry, you don't that's have to the be. point. Stop being a you professing Christian. Be. Stop trying to defend people shit that is me. indefensible. People ahead, ask me all the time, why'd you, leave, why'd you leave Christianity? And my one-line answer, I've reduced it to this. I got tired of making excuses for God's poor behavior. And once you do that, once do you, you come to that, that place, once you come to that place, Jason, it will set you free. You don't have to defend you God anymore. You believe that context anymore. matters, though, when you're talking about morality. Context. No, no, I, because it I was do. immoral for those so people. Context never matters. No, no uh, my, my, saying, my position is that all morality is situational. But if you're going to say that it was okay to own people as property, please describe how and why that situation is moral. I, as I was trying to say earlier, and I promise you I'm not trying to be slimy or slippery, do I find it distasteful as I would cannibalism? Yes. I'm not in disagreement with you that it seems abhorrent to me. My mind, though, says that there are things that exist that if I were to say that, yes, it seems distasteful, could I prove it's immoral if I'm defining my own set of morality? Because your standard, my standard, whoever's standard how would we say that we're right? Because you know that there's several people out there, society... Yet you're willing to say that a God you cannot prove is right. You don't know what God says at all. You don't know what God thinks at all. You are willing to throw away the best standard that you and I could ever agree on, which is the well-being of thinking creatures. You're willing to chuck that away just because you're terrified of the prospect that maybe the God you believe in isn't real. That's sad. No, I'm terrified of the prospect of if somebody else were to define morality, and they're saying whose well-being that they're out there for, everybody's going to draw a circle around what they think is right. Yes, yes. And you know how we solve that, Jason? Jason, do you know how we solve that problem? Taking a popular vote? No. We do it through discussion and debate. You know how we can never solve that problem? By pointing to a holy book and saying this book's right. That will never solve it. You're there's not a there's not a, there's not a there's not a single problem with my secular moral system that is in any way solved by your belief in a God. Not one. Okay, can I point out one example and then I promise I know you're restricted for time. I'm sorry to eat up yep. time. If we talk about bodily autonomy, because I know the discussion of abortion has been a sore point, and I'm not trying to go there to, to cause hurt feelings. If we talk about bodily autonomy, how do you feel about mandating that people should get the COVID vaccine? Then? That's not bodily autonomy issue. See, one of the things is that nobody's mandating that you need to get That's the vaccine. That's a societal uh, issue. So this is this is one of those things where um, we are doing something and putting guidelines in place to protect all of us. You're by, you can refuse. You just don't get to go out and interact with other people. Okay, That's it. I was simply asking your feelings if you think people should be forced to get the vaccine. No, but, but oh, here's if the they deal, want to interact Jason, with other people. To go to, if you wanted to go to a restaurant that had a sign up that said no shoes, no, no, no shoes, no shirts, no service, yeah. and you didn't have a shirt on, are you saying they're forcing you to wear shirts? No, only if you yeah. want to come in their restaurant. It's yeah. not complicated. I agree with that, and I respect going into any place that requires a mask. I'm not saying be an a-hole. All I'm saying is if somebody were to come back and say, I think everybody should be forced to wear, wear a mask or get a vaccine, then to me, you can't turn around and then say that, well, abortion is, is strictly should always be allowed because then. Jason, you know, Jason, you know, Jason, you should have you should have stopped a few minutes ago because now you're really fucking embarrassing and way off track on a subject yeah. that we don't have yeah. time to go into because forcing oh, someone. Yeah, Forcing someone to carry a child to term when they don't want to is not in anything at all like saying no mask, no vaccine card, no service. Those are two, like, it's not even in the same fucking ballpark. I'm going to hang up so that you don't make yourself look worse, but thank you. Call back. Bye, another Jason. Time and we'll get into that. That's oh it, my Dave. God. It was like he had a, it's like he had a list of Christian talking points. He hit all, hit all of them in one call. Yeah. <laughs>
I just want to say, I just want to say, oh no, and then slavery and then abortion. And then, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, really, yeah, easy. yeah. Yeah. It, it's frustrating for me and uh, I get it. And there's other ways, by the way, there's many different ways to, for us to address this. Dave's going to have a way. I'm going to have a way. Um, it is absolutely embarrassing to me that I share a planet with people who won't accept science and scientific facts, but will accept the Bible. We saw that in several calls today who are terrified of saying, hey, the Bible is immoral. The Bible advocates for immoral things. And yet suggesting that, well, without the Bible, we have no moral compass. None of that is true. Dave, how many well, people that, have you they, murdered since since you gave up Christianity? No, none. All the ones I want to. I'll say it yeah. like, uh, what's like his Penda. name? Yeah, I, I've murdered Pendas. I, I've murdered and raped all the people I want to. The issue is I don't want to rape and murder anybody. So yeah. I, he hit the nail on the head to be hypocritical of him to say that God was immoral because he knows that the stuff in the Bible is immoral, but he can't let go of it. And, and like I said, when you finally get, get so tired of defending God and, and just say, you know what, I'm not going to do this anymore, man, what freedom that is. I should have pointed this out because uh, while he is right, I suppose, that he can't claim to be a practicing Christian if he denounces what the Bible says, although many Christians do, I'd point out that the real hypocrisy on Jason's part is to pretend that he cares about truth or goodness and yet still believes right. without evidence the thing that is an the antithesis of truth and goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's hard for him to admit that, though. 